Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here. So the big news today is that Dolly 2 is now open and available for everybody to try it. Uh, so if you've been on that waiting list and you haven't been called, now's your chance to play with it anyway. So unlike Stable Diffusion or MidJourney, some of the other AI art tools out there, it has been around a while. Um, it existed earlier as Crayon or Dolly Mini, uh, which isn't as powerful. Uh, Dolly is a little bit more stock photography looking. Uh, if you're looking for a description of what it produces, say MidJourney, which is more painterly, and Stable Diffusion, which seems to do pretty much everything. Uh, for example, if you need a picture of a cat with a hand grenade, you can get one. Uh, it's exactly that type of tool. But it has some other really cool capabilities. And it's the ability to go in and modify a part of an image and give it a very basic prompt, and it will be able to fix that area of the image. So I use it more for troubleshooting in my photography than I do for AI art generation. So let's take a quick look at it so you can kind of see how to use it. I'm going to give you some basics, and then you can go and play. Now the Dolly 2 interface is pretty simple. It's just web-based and you've got just your prompt. Uh, there's no other settings uh, really. So you're basically just gonna type in what you'd like. Uh, one of the refreshing things about the system is that it is very good at English. Uh, so it understands sentence structure, uh, unlike Midjourney or Stable Diffusion, where you've kind of got to comma separate things or space separate things and it really doesn't matter how you put it in there. Uh, this one actually uh, is very good at sentence structure. Another thing is that this seems to be trained more with stock photography. So you're going to get more of a photographic look from this. At least that's how I've been looking at it. Uh, when I'm looking to make art, I'm reaching for mid-journey or stable diffusion. This is more of a problem-solving tool for me and a very good one at that, uh, but is not one that I use for generating art from scratch. So for example, you can ask it pretty much for anything. A bag of potato chips that is on fire. Notice that every generation inside of here will cost you a credit. Up at the top, you have access to your membership. You can see how many credits you have. So this did not cost us four credits, but it cost us one for each generation shot. But the most exciting part of this tool is not this. It's actually the outpainting. So if you click up here and you go to outpainting, it's going to open an editor. This is the part that is amazing to me. You've got two options. Um, you can either work with an image and generate pieces of it, or you can start and put a piece in the middle and generate outwards. So I'll show you each one. So the generation frame in here is 1,024 pixels by 1,024 pixels. And we can load an image on top of it. So I'm gonna load one in here. And notice that this image is larger than 1,000 pixels. So if I want to, I can have the generation frame come and we can work our way around the image, or I can scale the image down so that it's under the 1,024. In this case, we'll make it a little bit farther under. When I click OK, I'll be handed this back. Now, hold on your space bar. You can actually move around the canvas. The interface is a little wonky. Like, I really don't like this white bar that comes across because if we zoom in, for example, at some point, the white bar cuts through the image. Um, you can also use your control key and your mouse wheel if you'd like to scroll this way. And then you can move the generation frame by left-clicking inside of it anywhere. So we can position this image where we would like. Now, again, because it understands English pretty well, we don't have to overemphasize the prompt here. Just type in Autumn Forest, hit Generate. This will cost us one generation and we'll be given four options. As you can see, it does a very good job of matching the style and color tones of the image for the most part. Sometimes there's a few that are special. These are pretty good. Once you find one you like, just download it. Now if we refresh this by clicking on the name up here, we can go back up to Show Editor. Now we can try it the other way. For example, let's work with this image here. So you can see it's much larger than 1024 pixels, but that's okay. We can accept it. And now we have our generation frame and we can float it. So we can move it off to one side, for example, if we wish to continue this image. You can see it did a pretty nice job of trying to match the context of what it was given with an extremely small prompt, which I think is really impressive. Lastly, what you can do is you can choose to use the eraser. When you use the eraser, you can take part of the image out. For example, here, we can remove this window. Move our generation frame there, and click generate again.
But the coolest thing you can do with the out painting tool is put an image in, have it generate the outside, and then load the image in again and again and again, creating what looks like an infinite zoom out. Are you zooming out of the image? Because each time you're asking it to generate the perimeter. We start with this image, for example. I just need to make sure that I'm less than 1,024 pixels on the long edge. I can position the generation frame where I like it and then continue working. Again, oftentimes an image will be a little bit off, but that's okay. We get four options and we only pay for one. Now what I would do is I would download this and I would re-upload it and start from here. So that's Dolly 2, uh, very powerful. As I said, I use it more for troubleshooting than I did for ideation or art generation, uh, but it's pretty much the most amazing stock photography generator that's ever going to be <laughs> and a great way to edit parts of an image that seem like they're almost impossible to find something that's going to fit. It fits perfectly. So I'm very excited. I'm glad that it's public now. I think it is because Stable Diffusion and Midjourney have both been very popular and it's been very difficult to get access to the system. So I'm glad to see they have finally opened that up. So give it a whirl and let me know what you think in the comments below. Everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.